Dresser James, on his Dresser James explains looking at Sangaropteryx. Now there was a request by Charles Russell to do a pterosaur, and I didn't realize I have never done a pterosaur on my channel before. <laughs> so there we are. Uh, and Jurassic World Dominion is coming out like a week and a half from now, and this is one of the first wave of toys, so why not? So same will supply. I have here and here my, my older models. Uh, these guys are accessories to a later story. Uh, the first and first model of this I found or was able to buy was this guy here. Uh, back about, oh, at this point, 20, no, not that many, like 15 years ago or so. Uh, no, 12 years ago. I went to a teacher supply store, and I, I don't know... But in Houston, all the teacher supply stores are gone. I'm not sure if they all got absorbed into Amazon or what. But anyway, uh, the idea here is that this little guy was a model, and it was you know pretty accurate. It has you know pterosaurs we know had would have had fur. Well, not fur. It's actually feathers. They're very thin on their on their body, but it would appear to be fur to everyone else. Uh, and they, their wings had a membrane, right? So this guy it hits all the major points. Um, you can't quite see him. It's tiny, but it gets the point across. Uh, the most obvious feature, of course, is the head crest you're seeing right on top right there. Uh, next one I received, if you go to Marshalls or um, like Ross, those kind of, those, those kind of stores, they, they have to have a small, small toy section. And they'll have like these little two-pack bigger small dinosaurs. So that's where I got this guy. So it came with another dinosaur in a pack, this being a pterosaur though. Um, and this one is actually in the walking position, which... Often is underappreciated that pterosaurs did walk on the ground. I mean, we don't we find their tracks. We know uh, they can launch themselves off. You know, where birds will run and take off flying, or birds will just kind of jump. They only jumped up. There's so, you know not, not a lot of running we see in tracks at least. So the idea here is that you see the same crest right there. It's this little bitty, and here's some like painted red. And in general, with pterosaurs, kind of the big picture is that pterosaurs are not dinosaurs. Okay, uh, think of it this way. Uh, you, I think when you're a human, you're a human, you're not a rodent. Rodents, mice, beavers, they're separate than you. We, we share a common ancestor, but you are not a rodent, basically, right? Pterosaurs and dinosaurs share an ancestor. They're closely related to each other, but they're not the same thing. Uh, dinosaurs did not fly. They could fall with style. They couldn't fly. This is first brought to our attention with this little here. This is the only model of pterodactylus I could ever have or could find. Um, and the idea is that pterodactylus, or the pterodactyl, commonly called, was the first pterosaur really recognized. And it was named pterodactyl because it means winged finger because we have five digits. Pterosaurs only have four, and of a pinky. And they have the first three are the claws that you see on the hand right there, usually. And the fourth finger, the, what we call the ring finger, is what's going along here. So on our pterodactyl, you can see there's a, there's a three right here and then a the little tip there. And it's attached to the, uh, like the hip, basically. A uh, new meaning to attach the hip, right? So the idea is that they're, they have these grabbing ones for climbing or walking or whatever, and they have that little long, long, long ring finger, right? So the name pterodactyl means winged finger. And the problem was that over time, they kept finding more and more species with different head crests, and realized they were different species. So the idea of the term pterosaur was brought about. And dinosaur includes like triceratops, velociraptor, you know, T-Rex, all those guys. Pterosaur includes pteranodon, pterodactyl, and our friend, uh, sorry, I hate, I have trouble saying the name. Sangropteryx, Richteris, which means it's after the, the region is from, the province is from, and also Opteryx means wing. So you heard of Archaeopteryx, same uh, root there too. So these guys are here. Now here's the actual model from Jurassic World, uh, and like I said, it's for some reason the Dominion figures like they're putting these like they have them attached to the box, and they have this like really large plastic. Thing. I think it's like a packing thing as usual. But there he is. Right there it is. Um, like I said, so. Using the official scissors of Jurassic James, I have here, and you can cut it out, release clacking kind of thing, and then the oh, and it's out. Okay, put it over there. So, looking at this guy here, now one thing to point out is that many of the Jurassic World figures, you can pull out this thing on their, on their back, usually have like a DNA code that you can scan. And this one being a flatter animal, that's it there. So it's like a little hood hat you open up. Um, there is no, yeah, it's okay. So there's no like flapping action. A lot of pterosaur toys have flapping action. What I do find is in the feet are, they're flat for standing. They're, they're like for standing. So I'm assuming, nope, not going to work. You can technically give it a, like a, a standing stance with the pinky going forward like this. But overall, that's, that's it. Now, one thing to point out, the skull is... 
accurate to what we know in the skeleton. There's a full skull in, in the Museum of China. Um, that has a crest on the back and it's on the front like this. The most notable thing about the animal is that its mouth turns up. Now, in the, the, the actual skeleton, there are no teeth in the very front, they're in the back, and the teeth are very blunt. So most research suggests they were shell, they ate shellfish, with the shellfish. Um, any marine animal without a backbone and a hard shell. So where I would talk about crustaceans and uh, mollusks, basically, you know, snails and clams, crustaceans being shrimp and lobsters like crabs, those guys. Uh, anything in the ocean that's like without a backbone and a hard shell is a shellfish. So based on the fact that the beak kind of turns up like this and that the teeth in the back of the real animal are very blunt, those, those aren't used for grabbing fish. You compare it to its cousins, or distant cousins, the uh, Rhamphorhynchus, a lot of sharp, long teeth for grabbing and stabbing. Uh, this guy is going to be crushing like that. So um, again, it, as far as points go, it has the three fingers, it has the fourth finger here, the membrane as well. Uh, the fur is on the body of the, the feathers. The wings seem to have what should be the membrane. I don't see much of... Yes, it's inside. they look kind of like feathers too, or fur, but it's supposed to be the membrane skin. Um, large kind of breastbone here. So uh, this is a, kind of early Cretaceous China, and the idea is that on the pterosaur family tree, it falls in... Now there's two major like, major branches. There's the, 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 the pterodactyl types. And that's going to be your Tranodon, which is more famous in the Jurassic world. And uh, in the movie comes out, Quest of Koalas here. Um, on the other side of it, we have the Renferincus and Dimorphodon. So this is Dimorphodon, like a scientific E model. This is Jurassic World's Dimorphodon, so it's a little bit... If you're wondering what they are, it's the guy in, um, in the, uh, with the first Jurassic World. They escaped the Pterosaur um, aviary. So it was Tranodons and these guys. Uh, and in the Camp Cretaceous, yeah, the other show. Uh, they show them too as well. These are very early pterosaurs, um, but these guys have, you know, in general, they have long, they have uh, longer tails, and they have bigger, like these big heads with these keel bones for flapping. Think of a, they seem turkey, that little, that big bone right there. Most of them attached to that, they flap a lot. These guys have those little, that little bone right there for flapping. Uh, the pterosaurs of later times, the Pteranodon, for example, or the Quest of Koalas, these guys have a, um, they're more like stealth bombers. They, you know, big wings, gliding a lot more, right? So our, our guy here falls closer to their side than their side, right? Um, as far as the model goes, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. Uh, pterosaurs are interesting because one, one thing about pterosaurs, they fly. So um, you can find the same genus on multiple continents. And with dinosaurs, they're often very much located in one locality. You find them in one, or, or they might migrate in a, in a range, you know? But generally speaking, you, you, know, you don't really find the same dinosaur outside of play tectonic play. You don't find the same dinosaur in North America, Africa, in, in, in Europe, right? Um, that does happen in the Jurassic because the dinosaurs are breaking apart. But by Cretaceous time, you know, we, don't see, we can see pterosaurs crossing continents kind of thing. And that's kind of really neat to point out. Um, but with this guy, again, it's a really neat model. It tells a great story. Um, there's a number of books on pterosaurs. People often just think they're flying dinosaurs and they're just not. And people get to, you know, why do you get so mad, James? Because they're not. I mean, if I called you a cat, you're like, no, I'm not. Well, some of you might be happy to call a cat, but most people are like, no, I don't want to. Um, but again, give you perspective on these animals, like Quetzal Koalas, for example, which I'm going to do a video on that one because it's going to be in the movie. But, um, you know, it's tall as a giraffe and it's walking around on all four. So, I mean, these animals are very different. And I often use the example of this with Quetzal. How, um, imagine, a, you know, as close as living relative are like crocodiles, right? Uh, well, technically it would be birds too, but, but the idea is that imagine a crocodile's attitude with a giraffe's height with bat-like wings and fur and a beak. That's what pterosaurs are like, you know, or small versions of that. So they're really interesting animals, and they were the first vertebrates to take flight, meaning that the first flying animals were um, bacteria. Well, oh, sorry, sorry, bugs, bugs, animals, not bacteria. Uh, the bugs kept their wings, sorry, kept their limbs and grew wings. Pterosaurs, like birds, like bats later on, kept turned their forelimbs into the wing. So um, the idea here is that these guys would have, uh, you know, had to walk and fly on the same thing, where bugs just kind of walk and they have their wings separately, you know. And so anyway, but with this guy again, uh, the question always is, what's the purpose of these crafts in their face? Um, Notice that they're often either right over the eye or right in front of the eye, and that tells us that the animal is using for display for its own species, intra species behavior. Meaning that um, if you have a really big, unless it's like 
a horn, <laughs> but no, horns are solid. If you, have, if you have a crest that's really large, that's for communicating with your own species. It's, so the idea is that if, you, if there's pterosaurs are in the same area, you and I can go to like a forested area, see several bird species, and hear their songs. To us, it's just like a bunch of cacophony. If you're a, you know, a bird expert, but for the for the species at hand, they can see that we are one color, we are one shape. That other kind of species of bird is not the same thing. And my final example of this, I was doing a tour in a museum, and the little boy asked me like, how could like the Platycus tell a uh, a patasaurus apart? And I said, well, to you and I, they may look very similar superficially, but to their individual species, they look very different. And so to that same Diplodocus or Apatosaurus, if you were sitting next to a chimpanzee or a monkey, you're a primate, they're a primate, you're the same, but within their own group, they can tell them apart. Same thing with pterosaurs. These guys, uh, I mean, they, the job the birds have today, they did it first kind of thing. And these guys would have been able to identify each other, they have really good eyesight, they would have see the crest hear the noises probably. So it's, they're really interesting groups as a whole, but the idea is that this is one of many. So I like the fact that they made this model because, I mean, Tyrannodon, I love it, it's a cool animal, but it's been played out, it's everywhere. It's very popular, it's very common. That crest is really known. Quest Qualis being one of the, disputable, one of the biggest ones. That was, you know, it's getting a lot of fans, a lot of attention. To have a species that's not as well known is a really big deal because I encourage this kind of behavior because and that, and it, it, it helps kids particularly learn different species, different association, different environments, different geography. So that's why it's such an important thing. Even though the toy itself is like, I'm not like, wow, it's great, but it is great in its own right. But it helps as a, as a part of the broader picture of looking at the fossil record, comparing different things. That's why it's so important. So this is my first pterosaur video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, next week I'm going with dinosaurs again. I have some videos I already pre-shot. Uh, I just inserted this one as a special request. Uh, YouTube has told me to remind you or ask of you to oh let me do the hat like the thing like you know could you please uh share and subscribe and do all the other things uh, and ring the bell for videos i do on different things that being said see you guys later